going to start out with a curved nymph hook, a stone nymph hook. This is a Umqua U106. This is a size 8. I've been actually really impressed with these Umqua hooks. Um, I don't think TMC makes this hook anymore, so Umqua is kind of the, the next go-to. Uh, but they've been really good hooks. Um, really impressed so far. Real sharp, real durable. I'm going to start my thread and get a good thread base here. This is Vivis 10 knot and this is brown. So get a good thread base, just the key component to any durable fly. I've got 0.025 lead wire. You can use lead free if you want, that's fine. And I'm going to just run it up here. Instead of using my scissors, I'm just going to pop it off with my fingernail and save my, save my scissors. And I always kind of start short on this side so I can just run the rest over with my, with my fingers. And now we're going to just wrap over our lead wire with a squeaky bobbin. Hopefully that's not going to be too annoying for you guys. Here, we'll fix that real quick. Alright, that's better. So I make three or four passes, sometimes five. Just kind of run over this lead wire so it doesn't slip on you. Alright, now we got to build a taper up to the lead wire. So whatever dubbing you're going to use... I just grab a little bit and dub it on. This is the Ice Dub uh, Pheasant Tail color. And this will be the dubbing I'm using for the whole fly. I'm just going to dub it up and then wrap my thread over and just create a good little taper here. So I don't have an abrupt drop off. Alright. Looking good. So on the very back, I'm going to just add a little dubbing ball to create space for my goose biots. So instead of them, and if you flare them out, they're naturally curved one direction. If you flare them out, you won't need this. I like to flare them in. Um, it just looks buggier to me when they're, when they're kind of flared inwards. Uh, I really doubt it matters too much to Mr. Trout, but uh, I, don't know. I feel better about it. I like it better, so that's what we're going to do. Some goose butts. I'm going to pull in kind of from the upper end in the big section. And I'm going to tie these in one at a time just to make sure I get them nice and even. And this is a kind of a lengthy trout fly, lengthy stone nymph. Um, for anybody who's watched my other videos, it becomes pretty apparent. I like tying complex flies and flies that take a while. So I don't know how long this video is going to be, but uh, it's probably going to be a while, just like the rest of my ammo. So there we go. There's our separation, curved inward, just like I like it. Now I'm going to take my rib here, which is the stone um, nymph rib from Pro Sport Fisher. All right, I found it. So with this stuff, you've got a shiny side and you've got a dull side. One's curved in, one's curved out. What you want to do, what I want to do, is when I rib it, I want to make sure that the brown stripe that creates a segmentation is facing rearward. So sometimes you got to play with it a little bit on how you tie it in. So if I tie it in with it down, when I fold it over and tie it, it's going to fold over. And you're going to see that it's going to be the wrong way. It's uh, The rib's going to be pointed to the front. So I want to flip it over, tie it upward. So when I flip it over and fold it over, the rear's going to be facing towards the back. Tie that in. 
and this stuff is fairly well not fairly it is it's translucent so there's a bunch of different things you can do here um, you can just add brown thread and make sure it's solid all the way up and uh, make sure it's a solid color if you just if you have lead wraps and other things showing it's going to show through your ribs so what I like to do is use this Mirage pearlescent tinsel I'm going to use that as my underbody and so we create a lot of light reflection under my body so I'm just going to wrap that up and I'm going to go long and you'll see why I'm going to go long and this doesn't have to be perfect like it's a you know nice salmon or steelhead fly because it's going to get covered up anyway you can see that light is shining right through so in the rear I'm gonna have these this brown rib really close together and I'm gonna spread it out I'm gonna space it out further as I move up the body short you can just make a wrap put your pointer finger on there that way it holds it all together okay and once you get her there go ahead and tie it off and just like that we've got a really cool stonefly body now the wing case the stonefly wing case we got to measure a little bit here. So they're numbered one, two, three. And grab three. And grab two. And overlap them a little bit. And grab one. And I'm just going to see. We've got a little head and eyes and everything. So I'm just going to match it up. To where I'm going to start my body. So we're looking at about halfway on a size 8, and that's exactly where I want it to be. So I'm just going to kind of put my thumb where I'm going to wrap back to. Another easy way to do it is you can lay all three sections on your desk, measure them out with your scissors, grab your scissors, measure it out, hold the scissors to that length, and then measure back on your body just about where you want to be. And that's typically what I'll do, but since we're doing a video here, I just wanted to give you a visual. Um, I'm using size large on a size 8. That's that's perfect. It gives you... Real stone imps are about half and half. Half body, half wing cases. Uh, and on the size 8, on the large, uh, that that's just perfect. Um, Morton, if you're listening, we could use an XL for a size 6. Because uh, we do use a lot of size 6 salmon flies. Um, so Pro Spore Fisher makes a black version um, that I'll use in a size 8 as well. Um, but it's a little harder to see on video since so we're doing the Golden Stone. Um, but the black would be nice to have in a size 6. At any rate. So right now I'm just going to dub. There's kind of a little spot back here. And that's where our first wing pad is going to go over. But first I'm going to put on some goose biot legs. And we're going to have rubber legs too, but if you do both, it's really buggy. We just uh, just got back from the Deschutes River. Uh, we're right about, uh, it's late April right now, and we're just about uh, to salmon fly time. They're going to come early this year. We've had a low water year, and we just wrecked fish on this fly that I'm tying for you right now. Uh, just killed them. Caught some really nice fish too. So anyway, I'm going to tie in a goose bile on either side as my legs. 
going to clip off the butts there. The good thing about all this is it's going to be hidden so we don't need to get too crazy with these nice super close cuts. So I'm going to put on my first wing case. This is number one. Hopefully you can see that in the video there. Number one it says on all of them. I'm just going to push it over the back and tie it in. And these are these are just sweet. They're pre-marked, pre-marked really well. Um, before you know, we were using Tyvek sheets and marker and them up and all that, and those worked fine. But it's just too much headache. These come out of the out of the package, just ready to rock and roll. Package looks like this. They're all labeled one, two, three. You get a bunch of backs in here. The rib out of the package looks like that. Uh, this is all. Each one's one one rib. Um, and they just pop right out totally waterproof and very very durable all right next step add more dubbing and again this is the pheasant tail ice dub it's pretty bright dubbing this is pretty bright fly though this this kind of reflects a lot of light um, if you wanted something a little more drab uh, don't put the tinsel underneath the body that'll really darken this fly down and you could use a natural dubbing um, instead of an ice dub, like a reflective dubbing. So that's probably about good, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take my number two and I'm going to measure it before I do anything else. What I want is that I want it to just overlap just a tiny bit, not way back there, but just the tiniest bit I want to overlap. So this looks really good right there, so I'm going to tie a number two in. Number two looks like I don't have enough to clip. We're just ready to rock and roll right there. Okay. Another set of goose bites. I'm using gold goose bites. You can use brown for this as well. Now on these I'm not going to extend past. I'm just going to leave this one a little shorter than the first set. One on either side. All right, tie those down. Now at this point, I'm going to bring my thread up to the eye because we're not going to tie this off at the eye. We're going to be tying it off back here. So this is our number three. We've got a little stonefly head and a wing pad and we've got two little eyes. So we're going to tie this in reverse. And make sure you get it nice and straight. And now I'm going to fold it back and I'm going to measure just like I was doing with the fly. So that's looking pretty good. Everything's real nice and evened up. Now we're going to make some tighter wraps, really make sure that's tied in well. This one I'll clip and I'll come back to where I was working. Again, more dubbing. And this time I'm going to just dub real light. I want to create an even drop off point here. So this one's going to pull that off here. So this one's going to get wrapped down again because we had lead up here. I don't want a harsh drop off. I want it to be nice and smooth. And so we can kind of blend that for an underbody. All right. And for the next step, uh, that's fairly important, uh, getting an even body because we're going to add some rubber legs here. And I'm using these barred sexy legs from MFC. What I like about them is they have a natural curve and so I can curve everything kind of in, uh, which is exactly how I like to do it. I don't like to curve out very much. Um, 
because I like how it spreads when you curve them in. So if you can see, we've got a wide X here, which is what I want. I don't like them poking straight out like this. And that's another reason I'm not using rubber that much. Uh, for a lot of reasons, this stuff's super durable, way more durable than rubber. Um, and what I really like about this stuff, and this is the same material as Flexi Floss, Dino Floss, all that stuff. Um, once you get them in, with silicone especially, you can't do this because of the metal flakes and the silicone is not strong enough. And with most rubbers, they'll break. But if I don't like the way the legs are, I can pull it and adjust it and then move it back and they don't break on me. Um, you can pull it kind of thinner than your thread, adjust it however you want it, and then when you pull them back they just stay right there. You don't have to worry about them breaking. There's nothing more frustrating than tying this fly and adjusting the legs once it's done and having them pop off. Um, you know, you just kind of waste time and it just sucks. So um, These sexy legs uh, don't do it. Any of that sexy floss, dino floss, um, it's all the same, same material. Uh, I use this because I like the barring. And the more variegation I can get, the more barring I can get, especially in trout nymphs, uh, the better. It, uh, it just seems to overall be a lot buggier um, and work a lot better for the trouts. So I'm just going to dub over my legs here, move them back. Now we want to be real careful just to give it an X. And you don't want to dub you don't want to dub these legs together either. You want to space your dubbing out so your legs stay nice and X'd. So now I'm going to pull this back and I'm going to put my legs right where I'm going to tie off my thread. So my third set of legs. They're going to go right here. Two more goose bites. I'm going to try to put them underneath my legs so I don't interrupt what I got going on here. That one went above. I'll get him below. Okay, once you get a position, take a couple good hard wraps. Once again, this Vivas 10 on I just, I keep, I keep saying over and over in the videos how much I love this stuff, and it just keeps kicking butt. Alright, now, this is probably a little fancier than we need, but we're tying a cool fly, so let's make it cool. I'm going to add just a little bit of dubbing, very small amount of dubbing, to the head. And I'm going to just make a little ball. And this will keep these antennas off of the hook eye. And I'm going to pull a couple goose bites from the tip, real small. Or smaller than we've been using. I'm going to tie in my little antennas. Once again, I like them to curve in. out our dubbing here. Okay, fold the head back. behind you can see there's a separation between the wing pad and the and the head. I'm just gonna make a wrap. Three wraps. I guess that's a total of four. 
Actually, I didn't get it quite back far enough. One thing to take into account, as you add dubbing, you're going to create room. Sometimes you have to stretch this a little bit to get it back where you want it. There we go. So the more dubbing you add up here, the more the less amount of room you got to get there. So you actually add space as you fold it back. So sometimes you have to stretch it out. Okay, now I'm gonna whip finish. thread all right and so we a couple options you can actually clip your legs at this point and call it good I like to knot them the easiest way to knot them is grab a bodkin tie a knot And make it real loose so before you tighten it make sure it's going the direction you want sometimes you got to tie a couple knots to get to get the legs not sticking backwards and stuff you can use your bodkin to move this knot up and down before you tighten it to adjust it where you want it and just remember when you tighten it it's going to pull outwards so you want to pull this knot a little bit in from where you want to tighten it and there's your there's your leg so I'm going to do this all on all four and get right back to you all right I'm done knotting and trimming my legs down you can see we got quite a sweet profile here on our stone and the last thing you can do if you want uh, not required a few uh, hours of fishing or a few whatever minutes of fishing you can just kind of come through and get a little velcro and rake this ice stub out just a little bit just to give it a little a little more movement a little more aliveness and there you have it